to everyone. Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor for me to virtually participate in this marathon global town hall on a timely theme of rebuilding from the COVID-19 world. As we all know, the COVID-19 crisis is different from other crises because it is multidimensional. There's a health dimension, an economic dimension, and a social dimension. And uh, of course, in, in some regions and some countries, it is combined with other crises, such as conflict, natural disasters, and even political instabilities. So to speak about rebuilding, we need to look at how to rebuild on these different dimensions. I would like to just share our experience uh, at the bank in responding to the emergency situation uh, and providing a relief and how we do this uh, and uh, adopt a number of principles, which we hope uh, will help to uh, the, the rebuilding and recovery process. So first of all, do no harm, which will have long lasting effect. And second, find opportunities for recovery, whether it's growth, job creation, uh, while at the same time, build resilience and sustainability. Third, do not forget other crises such as the climate change, uh, as you are designing your programs uh, and doing recovery and rebuilding. So let me just briefly address how we rebuild with these principles on these various dimensions. Uh, and of course, there are various links between these dimensions. And this is a very fluid situation uh, where things uh, change uh, uh, very rapidly. And uh, the, the key word is flexibility and adaptability. So on the first dimension, which relates to the health uh, aspect, we know that uh, there are already now 56 million cases uh, with a lot of that uh, increase happening in advanced countries. We have 1.3 million deaths. And it appears that the second wave um, is likely to last uh, through, the, through the winter in the Northern Hemisphere. So the key uh, or the major issue right now is about vaccines. When will it become effective? Uh, and, and when it was when it is found, how long will it take to actually do the process of vaccination? We must remember that uh, vaccination of whole populations have, has not happened uh, since the smallpox. So countries actually have to uh, build up uh, and expand the facilities to be able to do uh, mass vaccination. For us at the bank, for the four poorest countries, uh, the issue is really about fair and equitable uh, access to vaccines. Um, past experience uh, with uh, vaccines, whether it's polio uh, and others, uh, it, it is found that the developing countries, the poorest countries are the last to get access to vaccines. So this time we, we, we cannot uh, let that happen or it will just really sharpen uh, the inequality that is already there and lead to a very long road of recovery uh, for these for the poorest of countries. Uh, and at the same time, uh, because we know that the vaccination process is going to take time, uh, it, we are still in a situation where we have to undertake the triple T, which is testing, tracing, and treatment, as well as uh, to the extent it, it is possible uh, to start opening up, then you need to introduce the, the safe pro protocols for going back to school, going back to work, uh, going back uh, to travel, uh, and all these have to be in place at the same time. Uh, and what you are doing is actually building a pandemic system so that you are ready for, uh, for the next uh, pandemic, you know, including uh, the data uh, on, on people and how you can do uh, effective uh, testing, tracing, uh, and, and uh, therefore controlling uh, spreads. Uh, so it is uh, preventing damage uh, and harm in the short term, but also thinking about resilience in the longer term. At the same time, in the kind of do no harm uh, box, we need to maintain current health services to continue to function uh, so that uh, deaths from other diseases such as HIV, TB, and malaria uh, will not rise and that primary health care services, especially for basic maternal and child health services and children vaccination will continue. Otherwise, you will have irreversible damage uh, that, will affect, uh, uh, that, that will affect human capital. On the economic dimension, we know we are in for the worst uh, recession uh, ever since World War II. Uh, no country has uh, escaped this. Uh, in East Asia, the recovery is happening uh, uh, earlier than, than other regions and, and uh, with China 
already starting uh, to, to go back to normal and having positive growth. It has had uh, a positive effect uh, on, on many countries, uh, in, in, especially uh, in the East Asia region. But poverty, extreme poverty will go up. Uh, our estimate is around 88 to 115 million, and there will be new poor. Uh, and women are more affected, uh, youth are more affected, the, the, more, the uh, more urban areas are more affected, and there is global hunger that will rise to anything between 83 to 132 million because of loss of income, uh, not because of shortage, of shortage of food. And we know that in, there will be increased inequality uh, to, because of the impact uh, on, on lower income groups uh, and the informal sector. So how do we make sure that we save lives or save li livelihoods also? Poor and new poor and the informal sector. This is all about adapting the social protection system and rebuilding them to anticipate the next crisis. Uh, cur uh, currently or before the crisis, 80% of the poor were not covered uh, by any social protection uh, system. Now, uh, as uh, countries have to uh, uh, introduce a social protection programs, uh, we are building out uh, programs uh, with whatever data is there and to the extent there is data and digital ID, it is much uh, easier to scale up uh, and deliver more effectively. So uh, we are working with many countries to build out uh, better uh, identification of, of people who, who need uh, the assistance, uh, uh, going towards digital ID, linking it to digital payments and telecommunications. So it's actually building out and adapting the social protection system uh, that will be uh, enable you to deliver uh, social protection assistance uh, in this current crisis as well as uh, in the recovery phase, as well as when you are trying to give them assistance uh, to build back uh, uh, on the economic side. Uh, and I think the last thing I would say is that um, uh, you know, uh, this uh, recovery, uh, positive growth is expected in 2021, but it will take time uh, to, uh, to get back uh, to the pre-crisis pandemic level. And uh, there will be uh, increased risks uh, to growth uh, coming from uh, whether or not the vaccines will come, how long it will be distributed and so on, as well as weaker investment, erosion of human capital and retreat from globalization or global value chains. And so preventing uh, in the short term losses of human capital, as I just described it, uh, through the health response and social protection, as well as education, uh, is, is going to be very important uh, to not have a lasting effect on potential output and productivity. On weaker investment, this is a, a huge agenda of how to undertake reforms, uh, as well as improve the investment climate. So uh, this is uh, really going to be a huge uh, challenge uh, also uh, to rebuild back uh, uh, post-COVID. Uh, for glo you know, the, the disruption on global value chains and uh, disruptions in trade because of trade tensions and pushback on globalization, this is really going to be um, a, a huge challenge. And uh, keeping open trade and investment will continue to be important uh, to ensure recovery. So uh, the good news about the signing of the comprehensive uh, agreement, the regional, uh, uh, the RCEP regional comprehensive economic uh, partnership uh, agreement uh, in East Asia is a welcome news uh, uh, to uh, to us, and hopefully this will help uh, in in the recovery for the for the region as well as if the region recovers, it will also help globally. Globally, there are also a potential uh, increase in public debt. Um, uh, and because we see the largest jump in public debt since the late 80s and a possible wave of bankruptcies because of mounting corporate debt. So these are all things that have to be uh, dealt with. I think uh, the final thing I would say, uh, because it's just talked about so much, uh, is about green recovery, how, how to use the fiscal stimulus, stimulus to build back, rebuild back better, whether it's green infrastructure uh, or things like a restoration of degraded lands and seascapes which actually create jobs, improve livelihood of farmers and fishermen and have environmental impact. For instance, Indonesia is uh, going to restore uh, 640,000 uh, hectares of mangroves. So green economy uh, investments can drive jobs as well as reduce emission. 
Um, and uh, you can also think about uh, subsidy reforms in fuel and agriculture and repurpose them for social protection and supporting clean infrastructure, which will also have uh, uh, benefits. So these are just some of um, the ideas that we, we need to, to think hard and think carefully what to do in the short term, do no harm, and what you do in the short term that can build back re, uh, for a resilient and sustainable uh, recovery and uh, rebuilding of these economies. Uh, thank you uh, for your time, uh, and uh, I hope you have uh, good discussions uh, in this um, uh, amazing uh, global town hall. Thank you.